and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and the goal here is to get an AI to play Flappy Bird. It's a simple game, although it's quite challenging for a human, so let's see if I can build an AI to beat my high score and go superhuman. Doing this using machine learning in Unity is actually quite simple, although as usual the training process was very interesting. I had to essentially train the AI bit by bit. So first make it learn just how to avoid the floor, then slowly up the difficulty by adding randomness and smaller gaps as the AI learned more and more. I'll cover what I did to train it in more detail in a bit. Now the project that I have here is a fully functioning game. This was actually created completely from scratch in another video a long time ago, so go watch that if you want to know how the base game was made. So I can play it and it works exactly as you would expect, so just press the button to jump and for every pipe that I go through I get one score, then over time the gaps become smaller and the pipe height becomes more and more random so everything becomes much more difficult. So that's it, it's a very simple design. Now I wanted to make an AI to play the game flawlessly. So for that I used Unity ML Agents to train the brain model. I covered a complete getting started guide in another video so go watch that if you're not familiar with the toolkit. Machine learning in Unity is actually very simple and easy to use once you understand the basics. There's a complete playlist in the description. Also a quick note here, Unity is having a machine learning AI summit on December 10th. It's a free one day event with presentations, panel discussions and hands on workshops all about spatial simulation, playtesting, robotics, ML agents and more. All of it presented by experts and industry leaders. So if you're interested in machine learning or AI, check out the link in the description. As I've mentioned previously, the real tricky thing about machine learning isn't really the code. I'm going to showcase the agent class in a bit, but the code is actually super simple. The tricky part is setting up the training environment in a good way that allows for the agent to learn. So the first question is always, what does the AI need to know and what actions does it need to take in order to accomplish the task? Flappy Bird is a pretty simple game, there's only one action, jump. So adding the actions is very simple, just set it to discrete with a single action with two possible values, so jump or no jump. Then for the observations, this is how the agent gathers information about its environment. It needs to know where the various walls are, so adding a ray perception sensor is perfect for this scenario. So it adds a couple of rays, they get fired in front of the bird on all sorts of angles, and they are set up to detect checkpoints and walls. So if I play the game side by side, you can see, yep, look at that, look at how the rays are behaving. So there's an invisible checkpoint right down the middle, and the rays correctly identify both the walls and the checkpoints. Then I also added a few more manual observations. So here I gave it knowledge of its own transform position y, so essentially it knows the height of the bird, and then also knowing how far the next pipe is, as well as a normalized value for the current velocity. So with all of that, the AI should have enough information in order to be able to complete the task. Then for the level setup itself, like I said, I made this whole thing from scratch in another video a long time ago, so go watch that for a more detailed guide. Essentially, as you can see, the pipes are spawned on the right side and they move towards the left side. As soon as they get there, they get despawned, more spawn, and so on. And everything is pretty random. And finally, if the bird actually touches a pipe, then yep, we have our game over. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, in order to train this AI, I had to do it bit by bit. I first tried to train it right with the final game, but it just kept failing and failing. So it kept hitting either the ceiling or the floor, so constantly failing. Now, in theory, if I had enough processing power, I could train it just like that through sheer brute force. But I just have my humble machine, not a massive GPU farm, so I need to be a bit more clever with how I handle training. So what I ended up doing here is essentially called curriculum learning. ML Agents does have a proper way of scripting a curriculum, but here I did it manually. Essentially, you teach the AI starting from an easy scenario, and as it learns to complete the task, you slowly increase the difficulty. I will cover the proper way to script a curriculum, so stay tuned for that, but here, like I said, I made it manually. So first I trained it pretty much with no pipes, so just a massive huge gap and everything right down the middle. So essentially just trying to teach the AI to avoid the top and the bottom. Also in order to get to this point quickly, I used imitation learning, which I covered in detail in another video. I used it with a pretty high strength, so it learned almost exclusively from my demos. So on the config itself, I enabled both BC and Gale and using them both with a pretty good strength. So essentially the goal is to get the AI to behave exactly as I told it to. Then once the AI figured out how to avoid both the top and the bottom, I closed the gap for a little bit. I also upped the strength of the extrinsic rewards up to 1.0 whilst reducing both Gale and BC down to 0.4. So the goal was to make it start learning based on its own rewards and become better than me. The result of that was quite interesting. So first it had some trouble figuring it out, so the reward dropped quite significantly. So it was at 13, then dropped all the way under 5. 
but then it started to learn from its extrinsic rewards, and the cumulative reward shot up to the maximum. Now, up until that point, the gap height was always down the middle, so next up I added some randomness to the gap height, even though with a rather large gap. So with that, there's a lot more randomness to how the levels are created. And then I also lowered both types of imitation learning, so both Gale and BC all the way down to 0.1, so the demo barely impacts learning. At this point, really the extrinsic rewards is all I wanted to learn from. And this time the AI didn't even stumble with this new scenario, so it instantly adapted to changes and constantly got a perfect score. Now here the reward essentially has a maximum cap because of the value that I set for the max steps, so if it survives for a total of 2000 steps then it automatically ends the episode. And by the way, if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing and hitting the like button, it really helps out the channel. Then for a pretty big jump in difficulty, I tightened the gap size by quite a bit, which also means that the random gap height is even more random. So this is a pretty big jump in difficulty and it showed in the actual graphs. So on the previous one it instantly went up to 40 which was the current maximum. And as soon as I changed it, it dropped all the way down to 13. So clearly it had a bit of trouble adapting to such randomness on the pipe height. But once again the AI never quits on training so it pushed through its own difficulties and slowly adapted to its own environment. So you can see right in here it was only getting 13 reward. Then it improved and got a bit worse and improved and slowly and surely it got quite a lot better. And then all the way over here after 1.5 million steps it was reaching the maximum once again. You can see the results are quite a lot more choppy due to how much randomness this environment has. So with that the AI was already pretty good so I made two more levels of difficulty. And again the results were the same so it instantly drops down and then slowly learns over time. So on that one as well as on this one. And then finally I set the max tab back into zero, so now the episode only ends when the AI actually loses. And then look at those results. So as it started, right away it got only 20, but it instantly shot up all the way up to 220. Then for some reason it actually dropped down a bit, so I guess the AI became so good that it kind of scared itself. And then slowly started improving, constantly making higher highs. So the results are quite a lot more choppy, but it was consistently improving. And at this point, in order to achieve perfect scores, it would really just require more brute force training. So as you can see, ML agents can really learn anything if given enough time. And if you take the proper time to construct a good training scenario, then it learns actually pretty fast. There's also one really interesting thing that I use for training this. Essentially, I had to use a different method from what I covered in my other machine learning videos. In those, I usually put the training environment inside a prefab and just copy paste the environment a whole bunch of times. So that's a great approach. However, here, when I initially made this game, I didn't make it with machine learning in mind. So I didn't set up everything in order to easily support multiple environments. The game expects a single bird and a single level. So adding support for multiple environments would mean an almost complete rewrite of the whole game. Now, thankfully, ML Agents has an awesome feature where you can run training on normal builds. And in order to do that, you really just have to set up your build to require no input. So as I hit play, it instantly starts playing the level, so it doesn't require any input, click on any play button or anything, so that's all it takes. Then just make sure that your agent is set to default so that it actually learns, and then you make a normal build, so just go into build settings, make sure your build is in there, and just make a normal build. Now another thing is if you don't use any visuals for your logic, so for example if you don't use any camera sensors or any input from any camera, then you can make it a servo build, which means that the game will run much faster without having to do any rendering. So then you do it and just make the build. Over here I have my build and here it is the executable and if I run it, yep it runs in a normal command prompt and here I've got some logs so as you can see the game is actually running right now. So I have this build that I can use and in order to run this for training, I just open up the command prompt on my virtual environment. Again I covered all of this in detail in the getting started video. Then doing the normal command which is running mlagents-learn, then passing in the config file and then you add the parameter dash dash env. So this is the environment, which is really the build. So over here I've got my project folder, I've got the inside this underscore builds folder, and inside Flappy Bird, and inside it's named mlagents.exe. So here I just put exactly that path. So exactly like that without the final extension. This is how we tell it what build to run. And then adding dash dash num envs. So this is how many instances you want to run at once. Now running more instances takes quite a lot more resources, like for example memory and hard drive space. So actually initially I tried running 20 instances, and my hard drive actually ran out of space because it used up almost 30 gigs. 
So I ended up doing most of the training with just eight instances, which is still quite enough to make it go quick. Then you just add dash dash run ID. So just the normal stuff and just press on enter. And yep, all eight builds are now currently running. You can even inspect the task manager and see, yep, we've got eight sentences running. Then to stop training on Windows, you just hit Control C and everything stops and it saves the model. Okay, so that's how you run training on an external build. So this is pretty much essential for most real use cases since when working on proper games, you probably won't be able to easily create multiple environments whilst inside the game. Okay, so let's try out our final AI. So first of all, here I am as a human player trying to get a nice high score. So let's see how far I can push it. Okay, there it is. I did actually pretty well getting a high score of 39, so that's pretty good. Now let's see the final trained AI and see how it goes. All right, so there it is, and it goes through the first few pipes. Okay, so far so good. Let's see how much it goes. And 37, 38, 39, and yep, there goes my high score. All right, so that's it. Let's see how far it can go. Okay, it's over 200, so at this point, I guess it's safe to say that the machines have finally beaten the humans. Or at least this AI has beaten this human. All right, so this was another real example of machine learning in action. As you can see, it's actually really quite simple. It took me only a few hours to write the agent and adapt the game to work with ML agents. Then it was just letting the training run over time while periodically increasing the difficulty. So doing some classic AI would have probably taken quite a lot more time. So here is another example use case of machine learning in action. Check the full playlist linked in the description where I'm adding all machine learning videos. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. Post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.